So, you're thinking about taking an exam soon? Certain inventor exam, maybe? Hmm, that's, that's nice. Anyway, today's tip is a couple of bits and pieces that you might want to know about when placing joints. Just a couple of extra things that might not be immediately obvious whilst placing a joint between two parts. So, a joint is an involvement of the constraint tool, which has been an inventor for quite a while. So, constraint, you know, you, you know what a constraint is. You pick constraint, you pick two faces two center lines, two edges, and it'll bring the parts together based on their surrounding geometry. Whereas joints, it's more to do with defining movement, motion, removing degrees of freedom based on how two components might behave together. Do you want them to slide together? Do you want them to be rigid together? Do you want them to rotate together? That kind of a deal. So you pick a joint, and then you pick the type of joint that you want, and then pick your two faces, you pick your two center points, whatever it is, and it'll place that joint between the two parts. Or you can leave it as automatic. But in this case, what I'm gonna do is pick a rotational joint and I want to place this eye bolt here and its adjoining rod, ladies, in between this front rocker, in between these two faces here. So what you do is you pick rotation, and I need to pick the center point between these two faces. Now with this eye bolt, I can actually get that here. So I can pick that inner face, and you can see that green dot there, that's representing the center of that eye bolt. That's fine for selection one. For selection two though, I wanna place and line up the center of that eye bolt exactly in between these two faces here and also in line with these two holes. So how do you go about doing that? Well, what you do is you right click in the graphics window and then you pick between two faces. You pick that, so you pick your first face, then you pick your second face, and then you get this yellow plane. And what you can then do is eye up the center. So you see those green dots, that's tracking along and it's letting you know that if you click here, the joint is gonna be made between that green dot there and the green dot you can see that's forming in the middle between these two faces, which will be there. And it'll place that joint and then smack that directly in between those two faces. So that's placing a joint midpoint between two faces. Another thing you can do as well, which you might also wanna know about for the future, just saying, is if you go to limits, you can define movement limits for this particular joint. So for example, you can say, I want this joint to start at zero degrees, which is where we are right now, and then I want it to end at, for example, 90 degrees. And that shows you there the degrees of freedom that you're gonna have. So this component is gonna be able to move in between zero degrees and 90 degrees, which is a sort of swinging motion between there and there. If I click OK, we've now got that joint created, and then this component can now move between zero and 90 degrees degrees there you go midpoint between two faces for joint and defining movement limits you might want to know about that in the future just saying and i'll see you in the next one toodles